Hello comic fans, here's Earl Grey. Uh, I'm sometimes asked how do you do your videos? Well, uh, basically I have changed nothing uh, since my very beginnings. I'm still using this old easel here, or basically misusing it, because I slipped an old uh, mobile case into one of the legs of the easel here. There's a gap and so I can Put this right through and even change the angle of this a bit. Um, and here's the chair on which I can sit when I talk about the books while I'm flipping through them before the cam here. That's basically it. Um, I mounted uh, some strong lamp over there. So this little light here has basically no function but to use up energy. Let's get started. I want to talk about these books. As you've already figured out, I will talk about Gary Panther today, and he is famous for a lot of things. Um, if not for uh, being the creator of some album covers for Frank Zappa, for an example, uh, you will surely have seen in one or other format uh, this uh, cover here for the Art Spiegelman's Raw magazine, which was my uh, first encounter not only with Gary Panther, but with Charles Burns as well. So I've showed uh, this cover here uh, before in my Charles Burns video. Uh, this is of course a very disturbing uh, combination of Nancy Popeye or um, one of Gary Panther's characters, Asshole, and someone out of Duckburg. Um, and another book that I've showcased in my um, Gary uh, Charles Burns uh, video about the art books of Charles Burns. But this book here I can always uh, show and again and again. Uh, it's a combination of um, Charles Burns drawings and uh, Gary Panther drawings and you can mix them up here um, however you want to with Face Tasm by Charles Burns and Gary Panther, produced by uh, Kamburakis. So, um, but now to the pure Gary Panther stuff, and uh, I have I have just the books that are eas more or less easily available still. Um, from all these books here, maybe this picture box book here, you ca still can get it, but uh, this is maybe my most rare um, possession. It's not one book, it's two books in a slipcase with uh, art from Gary Panther. But maybe to get a feel for the very special style of Gary Panther, it's uh, best to t start with Dal Tokyo, uh, which is a shortcut for Dallas and of course Tokyo. Um, and which publisher in the world is able to uh, publish this kind of a book of a pretty rare and out there artist like Gary Panther? Uh, this is of course a rhetorical question. It's of course just Fantagraphics books uh, can do so. Um, this is a bit of a weird one to showcase here in this video. Um, but the basic idea behind uh, Del Tokyo is um, that Mars is terraformed and um, the, the map for these, this terraforming process is a, mi a mix, a blend up between Tokyo. Here you have the plan for uh, the Tokyo railway system from 1930 and this is printed on vellum so it's translucent and we have other uh, maps on vellum uh, as a kind of uh, starting point to this comic here uh, for an instance a map of the Texas highways basically what these trips are all about are is uh, the weird imagination of one still young uh, Gary Panther mixing up what he uh, uses very good because it's uh, his surrounding and everyday life the Texan trucks and, and tractors and all the rural more or less rural uh, society around him and his uh, dreams of 
the far away and Japanese uh, just as a significance for the most uh, far away stuff that he can think of and blending these together to a weird uh, sci-fi imagination here about one guy killed off on a road on the Martian surface by these two dudes and uh, in a way a pretty consistent story um, starts here around this um, accident here if it was an accident but as you can see right from the first page here of the book that the story is actually not as important as the weird style of Gary Panther is um, it's pretty sophisticated in being not sophisticated um, it has all the energy of a young kid trying for the first time to draw his drawings, uh, to do uh, some drawings, uh, but with the experience of an adult. But usually when you um, grow up, when you mature in your style, uh, well, the most of us, it is that uh, stuff starts to get boring um, because you smoothen up the edges and most of the people try to compete with photography and uh, try to represent uh, the world more, in quotes, correctly. But they lose this power, this, uh, this energy that a uh, ratty line like uh, Gary Panther can offer here. So, um, yeah, it's this is really... Um, the basic premise to like Gary Panther, if you can enjoy this kind of weird far out art, uh, you're in for a trip, um, really, because these panels are very confusing and uh, the story lost, uh, has lost me very often and I had to read it again and sometimes there's no, uh, not really a story to discover, uh, but the panels in their weird beauty they really captured me and um, what we are looking here actually is uh, are examples of pretty good storytelling um, this uh, these parts were drawn uh, in the early 80s and uh, the story continues here to page 63 if I'm not mistaken yeah, but before we come to the end of the original run, um, Gary Panther gives us an overview of the story so far, written from right to left. Well, because he likes Japanese culture, I think, maybe because of that. Um, and here we can see the stuff mapped out. What happens since the, uh, the very beginning here's the car accident I've talked about and so on and so on and you can find all the events of the story so far within this little map here and talking about um, childlike or boyish fantasy this is absolutely the stuff that I would have done in, in my early days as well if I had the imagination of uh, Gary Panther of course and here we have this is the, actually the summary of talking about from right to left what happens at all um, and here we have uh, all the characters that are involved in the story so far but after that it really uh, at least <laughs> after that it really gets crazy with uh, comic strips like this one here who more or less only resemble comic strips uh, strips with a uh, yeah a reminder of panels but overall it's one landscape formatted panel here and so i'm very uh, thankful that fantagraphics went the whole way and uh, did the book here in this format because it would have been cruel to interrupt these panels in the middle the more you look at these panels, uh, the more you get out of them, 
but you will really have a hard time to uh, come up with a coherent story. I mean, I can look at this stuff here for minutes and minutes and still have not seen um, some important de details. Or everything is has the same importance, which is maybe uh, another character of the art here. Look at this stuff here. Sometimes we refer to this kind of uh, storytelling that it's abstract uh, storytelling, but I wonder if this is the correct term because uh, actually this is pretty concrete and, and not abstract. It, it's full of details and convoluted, maybe convoluted and um, confused uh, is the better description for these art. This looks almost like um, notation for a music piece, if you will, or a map, or 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 a mix of all above. And of course, something happens here. <laughs> Making way for this kind of um, beauty that is at first. Seems at first to be non, not descriptive, but then again, we have these house-like uh, constructions there. And you get the sense that um, Gary Panther had something in mind to tell us, but what the heck uh, was it? We don't know. And then we came, uh, he comes back to this car motive here. And um, yeah. It's here at one point here in the story, he hops from storytelling like this here, more or less old school cartooning, um, simplifying his line works to crazed out styles like this here. Or that. And this went way up to page 63. So, with some uh, murder accident here, and then uh, this, uh, and then the strip ended, and it wasn't before 1996 when uh, Gary Panther could continue his Dal Tokyo series here in a Japanese reggae magazine called Rhythm. And the first trips um, went back to a more clear, a more um, old school cartoony style that gives you the hope, oh, hey, we can get some story out of this. But pretty quickly, uh, this turns out to be real Dada approach because there's an increasing uh, disconnect between the text of these um, uh, comics here and what you actually can see. Um, despite of the art uh, that is a bit more cleaned up as you can see here and whether you like it or not, um, this, there's not much story involved here. The longer the strip lasted, uh, the bigger the gap uh, got between the text and the actual pictures here. Uh, this is some kind of, yeah, of course, weird blend in itself. And there's maybe the biggest problem you will have with Gary Panther. There's always too much to look at. And this can be sometimes a bit tiring, but I don't think that you will read um, Dal Tokyo for an in instance in one sitting. Uh, this is hardly possible in my opinion, but you will get 
uh, some yeah fun out of it. Uh, for instance, this um, yeah dada dadaistic uh, combination of uh, rural American life with uh, Star Trek. Sensors indicate an alien life form inhabiting the docking and storage bay. Docking sequence initiated. Phasers on stun. The shields are collapsing. The cat has an antimatter proxet. Granted that uh, most people uh, dig uh, the first part that I shown you before um, much more than the latter, but I'm really torn because uh, the second part, despite of all the incoherency, uh, incoherency and weirdness, it's yeah <laughs> incoherent and weird, and I like it uh, because of that. Gary Panther's most known character here is Jimbo. He had, uh, he was even the star or the title character of a comic book series once. Um, I couldn't get an issue of these because they're really hard to get over here for reasonable prices at least. Uh, this little book here published by Funny Garbage Press is easier to get over here even though there are still some speculators who want 100 or 200 uh, euros uh, or or more, um, don't feed these uh, vultures because if you look a bit, you can get them for 10, 15, maximum of 20 euros still. So this is an example of um, pretty coherent storytelling of uh, Gary Panther. He did these in somewhere in the 70s, at least uh, started it around this Uncle Garcia Pretty old school cartooning. Uh, this book could have been published in landscape format. Um, yeah, each panel on one page um, and the whole book a bit bigger, but I won't complain. I'm uh, pretty um, satisfied with this kind of presentation, of course. Uh, you have to be uh, satisfied because Gary Panther is not everybody's taste and. Uh, it's great if somebody, uh, a publisher, roots for him and, and takes the risk. Before we come to the two art books and the slipcase here, uh, let's flip through his last publication, at least in terms of comics. Sonji of Paradise by Gary Panther, published by the fabulous folks of Fantagraphics, of course. Um, huge oversized format, gold foil embossing, and it seems to be a trope, uh, these old underground cartoonists um, turn a bit pretentious in their, old, in their olden days. But at least uh, Gary, ba uh, Gary Panther is forgiven in my eyes. Um, at least he haven't tried to illustrate the Bible like some other dude had. Uh, it's a take on John Milton's epic poem Paradise Regained. Well, who hasn't read that? Uh, I, for co of course, haven't, have not, but it's basically one of these old tales where a, a poor but pure guy, a simple dude who is satisfied with his life and happy with that, he goes on a vis vision quest into the desert and is visited and seduced by the devil. As uh, with so many um, Gary Panther's uh, stories and, and comics, it's the art that makes you marvel at his critchy, scratchy line work. And I really like this, this quality of um, Gary Panther's art that it's not intimidating but you see how it is made and how clunky the line work is very often more often than not but you see at the same time how beautiful uh, these clunky lines and and uh, ratty um, constructions that have no real perspective at all they all add to some something real really beautiful and uh, it's inspiring because everyone actually can do so with the right attitude. And it um, convinces me uh, that one of my 
personally most important um, definitions for art is just that art is something that was done with the right attitude and nothing else matters basically if you really believe in it, if it, if something is important to you and uh, you can see this and it's something that you may call art in in the end so that's a good sequel into this slipcase here by picture box um, you still can get these for reasonable prices but as i said it with uh, cola madness and maybe dal tokyo as well uh, the vultures are already circling around and trying to get a ridiculous amount of money so get this these books here while they're available because they're really worth it i want to start with this book here um volume two focuses on the sketchbooks of uh, gary panther and sometimes i judge an artist by the way his um, sketchbooks look and here you have the proof that gary panther is a hell of an artist uh, and it's pretty interesting um for me to look at all these sketches because I can see uh, the influences that shaped uh, Gary Panther as an artist. Besides, of course, his father, uh, who was a hobby painter and other influences, but um, he was open to uh, other influences like, for instance, uh, South American culture, maybe, even though I would argue that this looks a bit more that uh, like Jean Dubuffet. Um, Jean Dubuffet was the most important um, artist of the Art Bru movement. They looked at art of um, yeah, uh, of mad artist, a psychologically uh, challenged artist, uh, collections that were uh, done in asylums and they used this kind of out there outsider energy for their own high art uh, productions so pretty fascinating to see this mashup of Jean Dubuffet's art and more comic uh, approaches because to my knowledge uh, Jean Dubuffet never had uh, drawn some shoes like that but just when you flip through uh, on the next page here and to get very different uh, approaches to do art and on the basic uh, bottom line you see how skilled uh, Gary Panther actually is it takes a lot to do uh, to um, continue all these different lines that go in different directions and use these different styles even though it may have cost him a career in the fine art world because in high art uh, it's very important to de develop some significant style some characteristics all these collector douchebags or some of them are um, they can really easily uh, identify your work your creation your invention even though um, it's very questionable if in this modern world you can really find out new stuff uh, it's more a combination of old stuff that makes can uh, get something new maybe like here the combination of nancy and the duck and popeye for our uh, cover that i've shown you before so um the most proper uh, category if you want to put uh, Gary Panther into some category would be in my opinion to uh, call him a postmodernist um, artist because postmodernism is all about denying uh, the possibility of uh, creating something really new this looks pretty Raymond uh, uh, Raymond Pettibon to me um by the way so yeah you accept that all the styles before are okay and they are similarly okay so it's no problem to 
to use some cartoon character and some Renaissance painting at the same time for uh, a picture as the inspiration for a picture or pulp um, ladies and voodoo dolls and uh, Walt Disney uh, characters and all the stuff here and this combination of different source material plus uh, the energetic lines and uh, art styles of Gary Panther makes his stuff so interesting. So now to his um, paintings and ah, here he is by the way. It has to be some more recent photography of him uh, from 2007. This book here is of course uh, thick like the other volume and so I just can showcase just some examples of uh, Gary Panther's art here and this uh, painting here including uh, the the um, title underneath it this is just an homage or persiflage of Paul Klee the famous uh, modern artist and really one of my favorite uh, artists of all time. He was inventive just as Gary Panther is and uh, it's but it's really fun uh, to see a, um, a painting that makes a bit of fun of old Mr. Klee here but in a very nice way I think. And only some pages further into the book here we have Godzilla, uh, a Godzilla painting and it seems to be huge, um, more than 100 inches wide. So it really screams art in a big major way. Can't squeeze this into comic uh, book covers, which is maybe uh, the incentive for Gary Panther to do his huge bigger than life uh, paintings here uh, and another nice huge painting uh, seems to be Jackson Pollockish just with uh, these out is these popping eyeballs so you can see some faces into this fake Jackson Pollock and manga influences all over and um, some paintings are so deliberately kitschy that it's really fun. I don't know if I would cherish each and every painting of his uh, on my own walls here um, because some are really no doubt about, doubt about it tasteless but so over the top tasteless that uh, it makes you just chuckle. But if you take another definition of what is art and what is not, maybe this is not uh, so important, uh, by the way, if something is art or not. But if you want to uh, do some categorization like this, one definition would be, uh, is it provoking? Does it uh, make some people angry? And I think a lot of people at least won't <laughs> understand the um, strange appeal of these pictures, at least for me. Um, so I really get uh, some, some chuckles out of watching these uh, paintings here. They're really fun. Yeah, and drawings like this one here, uh, are basically the stuff that makes me uh, leaving ex everything that I do right now including making this video and uh, draw some stuff uh, for myself here. Make my own art. But let's see what we can find here in the back section. Ah. Uh, one thing I haven't mentioned um, was Gary Panther's act 
activities in terms of TV production. There was a TV series. Oh, I haven't watched this. Uh, they weren't on German TV as far as at least I remember. But they seem to be pretty um, important in British and American TV. Uh, these here are models uh, that Gary Panther did for Panther Will, uh, some uh, stuff that he may use as a model for his comics. So, old photographies of his family and himself, very early drawings from early childhood. So, can you can see the influences from very early on his toys that and his toy collection is reproduced somewhere here. There is our young panther in his flat. The self portrait. So you see pop art was of, of course something that was really important uh, to him. He has a bit older Gary Panther, but for the life of me I don't find any Uh, here it is, Pee Wee's World, and uh, Gary Panther was, of course, the chief creator or the only creator uh, who did the backgrounds uh, for the TV uh, series for kids. Here you see, you can see some of his drawings, and uh, you can see immediately that he's really the right character at the right place. This is the job for him. Um, with his childlike fantasy. But here we have some other, in the best sense, childlike fantasy, of course. And uh, some other installations. Uh, so he was a bit of an op artist as well, uh, creating some light shows. And some dolls of his. In a way, uh, he reminds me uh, of Chris Ware. In a way, uh, definitely their uh, tempers are very different. And uh, while Chris Ware is used for this very controlled uh, and and exact line, um, Gary Panther is uh, exactly at the opposite side of the spectrum. But in terms of being some Renaissance guy, uh, doing, trying everything and in his very own way, in a very perfect and, and um, consequent way, uh, there he is really up to uh, with Chris Ware. But maybe that's uh, up for a discussion. So, um, yeah, that's basically it. I hope I uh, could make you a bit interested in uh, the work and comics of Gary Panther here. Uh, of course, there is a lot of discover uh, more about him uh, on the internet and more important uh, on his creations that you can still get. You can still get a lot like I proved here. Um, Thanks for listening and watching. Goodbye.